All right, another 24M. This one, slide press. Pretty common thing. Look at this side here. See the keeper? There's a piece of brass in here that the blade slides on. Look at this side. Breaks these bolts all the time. A lot of guys weld it. But the brass is gone from that side. So we'll break out the torch. We're gonna cut all that weld off. I have new keepers right here. So we got a couple of keepers here. Top plate, side plate. Here's the slide brass. Now this is the slide brass for the old style blades, the 24H models. Use this skinnier slide brass here. This is the M models. You can see it's a little bigger, a little wider. So give me a minute here. Let's get the torch, welder, and all that stuff set up. We'll get after it. There we go. And hey, what about five, four and a half? Bring it back just a hair. So this is what's in my bottle. This is what line pressure is coming out, regulated. This is pre-regulator, what's in the bottle. This is after the regulator, line pressure. Set it about 30. Let's see, we're using a number one tip. I like that. A little test light here. See if my tip's clean. It's gonna take a minute to purge these lines.
making some progress here, guys. Slow going. just the name of the game I guess all right guys I had to call in reinforcements called our field giraffe that's what we call him I don't know if he wants to be on film or not but basically running up and down to the cab turn the table come back see if the brass fits and up and down it's just a whole lot of running around so I called in our field giraffe one of us will work the sticks in the cab the other one can uh, line up the slide brass and then we'll weld the keeper on it so if you want, if you don't mind being on film, we'll get them on film for you. Oh, I forgot to turn the damn camera on. We got the brass in there though. Thank you. So anyway, this is the field giraffe I was talking about. Let's get where we can fucking see. I'm like average height. I'm like, I don't know, 5'10", 11-ish. Yeah. That's our field giraffe right here. Something else I just noticed, guys. So this brass, if you can see that real well, it's kind of crappy lighting right now, but it's already about to spit this brass out. So whoever welded this should have lifted it up more because it's just barely snagging the brass. And if you guys can see how that's like smeared out right there, it's already pushed brass out this way once before. I do have an extra one of these keepers. We're just gonna grind that stuff down right there so it'll sit flat and we're gonna put it up real high. We might as well weld another one on here. Uh, we're already here. Otherwise, we're gonna release this machine and it's gonna spit this brass out guaranteed before even lunchtime today. So we'll get that squared away. All right, this is our second plate here, guys. We're just gonna prep it. All right, that should be good. We're not gonna weld it all the way around like the other one was. No sense in welding all the way like that. We're just gonna put a stitch weld probably. We'll go an inch, inch and a half long here, same here. And that should be fine. And we may put a small one up here in the edges. I mean, this is a lot of where your tension's gonna be at. It's on these corners. So we may, we'll check it out when we get in there. We'll just see what we got going on. All right. Not sure if you guys checked out the cab of these. One of these before, no steering wheel. Gauges are kind of cool. You got your cameras. That's for your rippers in the back. Uh, anyway, we're gonna tilt that blade. See if we can get in a better position, easier for welding. Well, let's get her prepped for welding.
All right. We're going to be using 6010, eighth inch. Grab a little handful. Probably won't need more than three or four. I like the 6010, especially out here, field environment. Everything can't be as clean as you want it to be. We also have 7018, which I rarely use just because, like I said, I try to clean it what I can, but it's just a dusty environment, dirty. So I like the 6010. Uh, it doesn't care. It's going to burn hot. It'll burn through any paint, any uh, grease and oils and stuff. I mean, it just, it doesn't care. It just digs deep and burns hot. We're going to be using Miller Bobcat 250 diesel. I like the settings right now for eighth inch. We are yeah, at the lower scale here. Oh, we'll be running, yeah, we'll run it about There's seven and a half. I like that. We already got the repair done. Get her fired up. I, I use my welder quite often, so generally it starts pretty easy. tacked in place for now.
technique that I like to use, I mean, of course, I'm not a welder as a trade. I'd say my welding skills are probably average. But I'll start, I like to run it downhill, but I'll start welding, let it pull up right there, come out of the puddle. As it pulls up, I'll drag it back to right into the middle. And each time I'm moving about a at maybe two rods widths because it'll puddle up pretty good. This eighth inch rod really doesn't mess around compared to the real little stuff. But that's just generally my technique. Is I'll hit it, it'll puddle, it'll start to puddle. I'll come out of the puddle. It'll start to puddle again. I'll come back and it puddles to connect the two. And I just keep walking it like that all the way down. Uh, but that's just generally, that's just one of the ways that I do it, you know, it's I find that one to be the easiest on welding stuff like this, downhill. Pretty decent gap to fill in there. So you'll see me hanging out longer than normal as, this, as I'm letting this melt in and fill. Like I said, that's a pretty good sized gap. It's at least an eighth inch, maybe even a quarter. city in there but like I said this metal will definitely get blown out before you have to worry about those welds I like it I mean that'll work <laughs> 